In this video, I'll walk you through the start to finish process that I used for creating this stoneless ring band. One thing to keep in mind when working on wire wrapped rings is that half hard wire will lend itself better to keeping the shape of the ring in place over time. Dead soft will be easier to work in the curly details However, it'll be slightly more fragile when being worn, as it'll be more likely to be bent out of place. For this ring, I found a compromise. My square wires are in dead soft, but my half round wire that holds together the band is in half hard, adding some stability to the overall band of the ring, but still giving me the freedom to create some swirling designs for the face. For this project, I've cut four five and a half inch segments of 21 gauge square and 30 inches of 20 gauge half round. To start our project, we're gonna take both of the ends of our half round and slide down to find the center of our wire. I'm gonna bend it so that the flat sides of my half round are facing in towards the center. Starting with two of my half round wires, I'm going to slide my half round Once I have one coil around, I'm going to flatten it so I can slide this to the center of my wires Once I've ensured that our coil here is at the center of our squares, I'm going to do five coils around each direction. With five coils in place, I'm going to rotate and add five coils to the opposite side. With all of our coils in place, we're going to take our remaining squares and place them on either side of our current coil. Taking our half round, we're going to pass them around all four squares three times. Once I have those three coils around all of my squares, I'm going to flatten the half round to ensure that our coils are nice and neat. I do the same on the opposite side. With our three coils in place around both sides, I'm going to bend each of my outermost squares slightly out to the sides just to create some space where we can pass our half round through. I'm going to return to coiling ten times around just our center two squares. Once I have my 10 coils around my center two squares on that side, I'm going to switch to my opposite end and repeat the same process, coiling 10 times around just my center two squares. With my 10 coils around either side, I'm going to add three more coils around all four wires on both sides.
From here, I'm going to adjust the pattern. I'm going to only coil five times around the center two, and then back to coiling around all four wires until it's time to secure the two sides of the band together. With our five coils on each side, we're going to switch to coiling around all four wires. Depending on the size of the ring that you're building, you may need to add or remove more repetitions through the pattern. For my size 7 ring that we're working on, I'm going to place the middle of my pattern over the 7 on my mandrel and bend each side around. I should be able to adjust slightly smaller than a 7 so that we can stretch it to size once these are secured together. We're going to slide our ring down to the size that we're looking for at that 7 and see how much space we have between these two wires to connect them together. This uncoiled space is the place that we're looking. We're going to start with two coils from each of our long 20 gauges around all eight of the wire endings. We're going to do it once on each side to start it out securing these together. I've removed my ring from the mandrel to make it easier to pass everything through. I'm going to take one of my 20 gauges and pass it all the way through the center of my ring and pull it tight so that it's snug all of these wires together. Once I have that wire in place, I can do the same with the opposite side. I'm going to pass through once more for each side. To finish securing our ring band together. I'm going to pull my wire endings from each side to tighten this whole structure together. I want all of the half rounds to sit nice and neat and flush next to each other. I'm going to start with one side. Once I've pulled it tight, and bend all of my square endings straight up away. Once I've done it with one side, I can do it on the opposite. From both sides, I'm going to separate the centermost square wire. I'm going to take my long 20 gauge half round ending and begin coiling one around each of those squares.
I went ahead and coiled 10 times around each of our centermost squares. And from here, we're going to take the next closest to the center square and incorporate it on both sides. I'm going to bring the half round around both squares two times. Once I have those two, I can go back to coiling around just my original square. I went ahead and added my 10 coils around just that square. I'm going to repeat that same process on the opposite side. Two coils tying these squares together and then 10 coils around just the original square. With both of our coil structures ready to go, we're going to bring each side straight across the front of the piece with the half round coils next to each other. We're going to bring both of our coiled half round square structures around the base of the opposite side. Depending on how tight your center coil is, you may need more or less of the half round. But my 10 coils around each side should be about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the excess off of my square. To the best of my ability, I want to make sure that the ending for that wire is on the bottom of our square. So it'll be sandwiched between the square and the band of the ring. I'm going to start to secure these to the band with the half round coil. I'm going to pull it through the center of my band so that the flat side of the square will be facing the finger and then follow with our second square. When I reach the other side, I'm going to trim these endings short and flatten them to the surface of my piece, tucked underneath themselves. With one side complete, we can repeat the same process on the other side. Our last two wires are purely decorative. We could, theoretically, trim these wires short so that they wouldn't touch the finger, and bend them up on top of themselves. That way only our half round coil would be on the surface. I'm going to use them as an additional decorative element. I'm going to start with my next closest to the center on both sides, bringing it around the opposite way over the top of the ending of our previous coil. and all the way to the opposite side. This gives a nice oval encasement for the face of our ring. I'm gonna secure both of these wire endings similar to the first, passing it through the band of my ring, and then pinching it up flat on the surface of the piece. With our last remaining wire, I'm just going to bring it parallel to our last wire and straight through the frame, not passing around the surface of the piece at all.
from here, I can trim the wire ending short, tuck it underneath itself, and secure it to the piece. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. With all of our wire endings secured to our ring, the piece is now complete. We can double check for size on our mandrel to ensure that it is sized appropriately. A special thank you goes out to all the names on your screen for supporting this channel through Patreon. What I'm doing would not be possible without your support. If you're interested in helping support the channel, follow the link in the description below this video. If you found this video helpful, leave me a like on the video. It helps me a lot with the visibility of my videos and YouTube's algorithms. To be the first to know when I upload new content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thank you for watching and happy wrapping.